Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Now, before me, you can see a huge selection of all laser cut parts. Now, what could that be? Now, um, you've of course already saw the thumbnail and the title, so you know more than I do at this point. Uh, but before we get started assembling all of these laser cut pieces, I want to give a big thanks to Endurance Lasers for sponsoring this video. I used their 10 watt plus laser to cut all of these pieces and it was a real treat. Uh, with the air assist and the very high power output of this laser, it was no problem cutting the 3mm plywood on just my simple converter 3D printer. No like big fancy CO2 laser needed, uh, just like fairly inexpensive conversion. To find out more about endurance lasers, make sure to check them out at the link below. Now, what I'm building here is a hurdy gurdy and uh, most of you probably have no idea what that is, and I don't really blame you, it's a very rare instrument. There are some fun YouTube channels that uh, are centered around this instrument, but mostly it is only very niche. Uh, there are some uh, bands that also utilize this, uh, my, one of my uh, favorite bands, Elevatier. who are also from Switzerland, uh, they use the Hurdy Gurdy uh, quite extensively and that's where I first uh, saw this instrument and heard it and I got fascinated with it. So this, what you can see here is the Nerdy Gurdy project. Uh, it's an open source project of someone uh, trying to make a way to easily and affordably build your own Hurdy Gurdy. Because since they are so rare, uh, the only ones you can buy commercially are meticulously hand-built and cost multiple grand. And that's just not really a good way to get into a new instrument that you're probably um, not gonna like play professionally or anything. So this project basically allows you to, by having a bunch of wood parts laser cut and 3D printing a bunch of the, the more complex, smaller part, and then just assembling it and getting an actually working instrument. Now, of course, this won't compare to like a nicely professionally built one, but to kind of get started with the instrument, this can be great. Now, originally, all the files are designed to be cut on a larger laser machine, uh, and the piece of wood that they are designed to fit on is like 600 by 400 millimeters, but the maximum cutting area of my laser is 300 by 250, so I had to kind of take all the pieces out and rearrange them myself and some of these pieces uh, I uh, cut in two and uh, laser cut separately but the main body pieces I will have to cut out by hand so I just printed out the stencil and I'm gonna cut this out by hand and uh, cut all the slots as I can't really have this in two parts but all the other parts I was able to either split up or they fit naturally also, some of the parts are designed to be cut out of 6mm plywood, but since uh, my laser works a lot better with thinner plywood, uh, I just cut them out twice out of 3mm plywood and then glued them together. Uh, I already uh, did this for these pieces. And this works very uh, quickly, it's not that much work. But now I think uh, I'm gonna take a good look at the instructions that come with this kit, as there's a crap ton of parts that I don't know for all of them where they go. So I'll take a look at this instruction and I guess give you a time lapse of how I'm assembling this.
All right, guys, so here we have it. The hurdy gurdy is finished. And I have to tell you, I was expecting this to be like a couple evenings worth of assembling, and then now we're done with it. But this took way longer than I ever expected. There's a crap ton of pieces, and they all have to be glued together and then sanded and painted. And of course, you could leave away the whole sanding and painting thing, but I want it to look good in the end. Uh, so I went to the trouble and painted all the surfaces even inside and I sanded and painted and lacquered all the outside uh, surfaces so that it has this uh, quite nice uh, black uniform appearance. I also added a bit of a design here on the top cover, just some Celtic knots, uh, thought that fit quite well. Um, you can also see that the holes uh, on the top plate I have uh, changed up the files a little bit uh, there was like a circuit board design which fit the whole nerdy gurdy uh, kind of uh, aesthetic but i was going for more traditional aesthetic so i uh, decided to put some celtic knots there as well so i just modified the vector file a little bit i also ended up being able to uh, get the top and the bottom plate laser cut as well instead of cutting it out by hand um, friend of mine was uh, setting up his uh, big laser uh, cutter and I was able to um, steal some time on that. Apart from that, uh, I didn't uh, film it as much, but the wheel itself is not just the laser cut pieces, but then afterwards it's nicely sanded round um, by a Put like a threaded rod through it and put it in a drill so that it I was able to spin it and then I could sand it nicely round and then I put a strip of veneer wood around it and this just creates a nice even and smooth surface. I had some like edge binding what I actually used to bind the edges of these tables left over so that's what I used. Uh, in the guides, they went through a whole big trouble of uh, bending a piece of thin wood that they had to shave down, but I found that this works extremely well. I was able to just iron it on and it sticks perfectly fine and it was a very good result. Then after I had everything assembled with a threaded rod in the middle with all the bearings, uh, then I put a drill on the end and used a chisel to chew up the wheel fully. Um, I, it's not perfect. Uh, Nothing about this instrument came out perfect. After all, it's laser cut plywood and not like actual nice instrument wood, but uh, it's pretty decent. The strings you can see on here are um, some violin strings here for the melody strings. Now, as you can see, one of them already is kind of loose. That's because it broke. You, uh, the guide called for viola strings, uh, which are a bit longer and therefore require less tension uh, to be at the same pitch. Uh, these violin strings uh, are not ideal. I first tuned uh, these up to uh, C, a uh, middle C. Um, at that uh, pitch, it worked fine, but they're actually supposed to be, uh, if you go for historical accuracy, a G. And while trying to tune it up to a G, uh, one of them snapped, so I didn't bother with the other one. Uh, I might replace this at some point with some viola strings, uh, then it should be fine with the tension. Now, also the tension did kind of warp the whole uh, thing. Uh, first of all, it's kind of wobbly on the table, so like the bottom must have warped, but what's much, much more noticeable is the back here. It uh, kind of pulled itself up since there's so much tension on the bridge. Now, part of that is probably because I'm using the wrong strings and therefore there's more tension, but it's also just, it's three millimeter plywood. Uh, you can't expect that to be super, super strong. Now for the other string here, um, this is a cello string. Uh, luckily my mom plays the cello and I was able to use one of her old strings, uh, otherwise this would have been probably uh, the most expensive part of this whole project. And on the other uh, side I also bought a, a violin string, um, which ended up not being long enough uh, since it's not a very old string. B but uh, the guide also said you could use a tennis racket string, so I thought, okay, that's pretty loose. So I actually used an old harp string. Um, for uh, most of you, probably don't have old harp strings lying around, so a tennis racket string might be easier. But for me, uh, I had a whole bunch of old harp strings lying around, so I used one that uh, seemed about right uh, thickness wise uh, compared to what uh, the guide showed. 
This um, string here, the one that's using the harp string, is the trumpet string. And what makes the trumpeting sound is that this this little lever here um, that is just kind of loose in there. And this, this string here, uh, which is tensioned with this tuning knob, knob here, kind of pulls the string up a little bit, which uh, just uh, varies the pressure uh, of uh, this part here. And if I turn the wheel this way around, it kind of lifts the string a bit, uh, creates vibration and uh, this piece here vibrates on the body. And this creates a very loud and intense uh, trumpeting sound. Um, if this is not desired, um, you can of course either loosen this here or uh, completely deactivate the string by putting it out on this uh, other, uh, like these holders. All these strings can be um, put up on like uh, little pegs so they're not touching the wheel and when you want this string to sound, you just pull it down onto the wheel. And that's how you kind of uh, control the sound. This hurdy gurdy has four strings, but uh, basically the sky is the limit and some of the bigger ones, they have a lot more strings and then you can change the sound up a lot by moving different strings around. Overall, I want to give a big thanks to the nerdy gurdy uh, team or person, or I don't know how many people are working on it. This kit is, well, these instructions are made extremely well. You can buy it as a kit. I don't know if it's available at the moment, but I, I basically cut out all the files, like it said in the instructions. I put them together and everything fit. Uh, there was only very minimal, just like the internal rod was not described too well. Uh, I had to do some guesswork there. Uh, but other than that, everything fits together perfectly. It's very adjustable. You can, all the strings, you can adjust the height here or the side to side movement here to get the perfect tension onto the wheel. Um, like the keys themselves, they work beautifully. And if we take a look inside the key box here, you can see that one of the strings is not really uh, in there, I just kind of taped it there. Um, but uh, this is how you thread the string, like how you change the pitch by pressing these keys. And then these little 3D printed pegs uh, like press onto the string and everything just fit together perfectly. No design work on my part required there at all. Now, one other thing to note is that uh, the way that actually the like transference uh, of the vibration from the wheel to the strings happens. If you don't play like the violin or the cello or anything, or don't know anyone playing the violin or cello, you probably don't know about this thing. Uh, this here is rosin. You wouldn't know about it if you have never used it, but what this is, is the thing you put on the wheel and uh, this creates the friction in between the strings and the wheels and makes it vibrate. Without this, it just kind of rubs against the string and doesn't really do anything. It's like if you have a violin bow without rosin on it, you can just kind of glide over the violin strings and it doesn't sound at all. You put some rosin on there and you get the sound we all know. Now, in theory, in like watching some videos uh, of uh, professional hurdy-gurdy players uh, putting rosin on their wheel and putting these little uh, cotton things here uh, on the strings. Uh, this looked very easy and uh, it just kind of worked perfectly and they got a great sound. Now, in my case, this worked well, not quite perfectly or uh, not perfectly at all. Uh, I had to put a crap ton of rosin onto the wheel, like. Uh, I went around and round and round and kind of used different sides to make it really have a good coating on there. And then the felt was is just a practice thing. Um, I, I, like the, after a couple times, it worked already a lot better. But um, I got it to sound like really quite good a couple of times, but then very quickly it started to kind of lose its sound uh, again. Part of that might be the rosin rubbing off, part of it, may, it might be the felt kind of moving to a not ideal position, or the entire instrument shifting a bit, so... This won't be an instrument that I play a whole bunch, but... To be honest, I probably wasn't gonna be a super hurdy-gurdy player uh, anyways. This is more of a fun project, uh, kind of experiment with it maybe learn a song on it and then have it as a cool display guide. So with that said and done, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions, questions, anything like that. 
also make sure to be subscribed so you don't miss any future videos about whatever I'm doing next. And now on to the tone demo. Alright, so first uh, just the melody string. Now I'll add the lower bass string. Now just the bass string on itself. Now the trumpet string. Trumpet and melody. Now all the strings. Now of course with uh, both melody strings uh, running the melody would be a lot louder and sound a bit better. Um, but sadly uh, I don't have a second string and spare and until the other ones arrive I just want to get this video out at some point. So please don't judge me for my playing. Uh, I know this was not melodical at all but I just want to kind of give you an uh, idea of what it sounds like and it probably like dropped out of tune just while playing. You can see that it's almost uh, coming apart uh, back here so I'll uh, detension the strings uh, again uh, to kind of save the shape a little bit longer. But I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching and until next time.